Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and Zygu is getting ready to release another firmware. This one promises to be a pretty big update. I've got a couple of videos on the channel on the previous firmware updates. This is firmware update number four, I think. Uh, so I won't show you the details of how to do it because they appear to be exactly the same, although it's not in English. So there might be something new coming out. Um, I did want to share with you what is actually in the release notes. These release notes came out yesterday. Uh, January 17th, 2022, and we had to translate them from Chinese into English using one of those online translators. So there's a couple of things that they've done. They have changed the um, the fuel gauge, the, the battery charge status indicator, and all the logic around how that works. And after you get the new firmware installed and the, um, the app updated inside of the new firmware, then you'll need to discharge and recharge your radio four times so that the battery status indicator works properly. They also changed the light. The light will now blink to indicate that it's charging and it will be steady on. The charging is complete and then it will be off when there is the charging, when you turn the charging off. I don't know why you turn the charging off if it turns itself off when it's done charging, but that's okay. The previous battery did this too. So 1.3 says after the update, when the power is lower than 10%, you'll get a, a red battery that's hollow. That'll indicate that the power is low and then it will shut itself off when the power is too low for its own operation sake. The big change here is that the battery voltage itself is no longer the indicator. They're doing some more battery magic with the current draw and some data that they're getting from the battery management, the BMS board. They've changed the way that the gen menu works so that instead of going around in a circle, you go left and right with the knob. So if one, two, three, four doesn't automatically loop you back to one, it's one, two, three, four. 4321-1234, that makes sense. Corrected the logic of the DFL menu. After entering the DFL menu, press other menus to exit. So that's probably bringing it more in line with the other menus that are there. Add preset telegram transmission function. CW, PSK, RIDI can be transmitted. Excellent, so we'll probably do a video on that. Um, adjust the CW decoding algorithm. I will check that out and see if that works any better. The startup screen has been changed and I've been looking at how to edit the startup screen. So maybe we'll be able to come out with some custom startup screen um, hacks for this over on the Toads Discord. There's a link to Toads Discord in the description down below. There's also a link to the GitHub repository where we have some of our own custom hacks to the firmware, some high res images of what the radio looks like inside and a discount code if you're interested in getting one of these play toys. Uh, let's see. All right, so they've optimized Bluetooth, so maybe Bluetooth is going to work a little bit better now. Fix the problem that the x-axis label of the SWR scan is not updated. That will be good. Bandwidth of the first group of SSB filters is widened. Good. Fix the problem that the filter is not saved after adjustment. I did notice that it wasn't saved, but I just thought that they didn't have the ability to save it. Excellent. The AGC mode indication string has been simplified and changed to AGC AFS and dash. So fast, slow, auto, and none is my guess. Added the current filter bank indication string, fill X below the VFW frequency. Okay, so that way you know what filter you're using. I mean, you would you would hear it, but it's also nice to see it. Uh, instead of saying LSB, DIG, and USB, DIG, now it says LDIG and UDIG. Okay, that's, a, that's an improvement that's not an improvement. It's just, it's just an is, okay. But you know, you know it went through committee. Like, should we do this? I don't know. Let's take a vote on it. Okay, well, yeah, let's do it. All right, fine. I don't like that we're doing it. Oh, I do like that we're doing it. Okay, well, and then now there's a story that needs to be done, and then it needs to be reviewed and tested. And Wow, corporate politics are fun. Enable the function of the microphone button. And we did find some hidden microphone button magic. I put a video out about that a day or two ago where it does screenshots. If you press the speech lock button, um, which could be now no longer possible. Short press, unlock the big wheel, long press equal no. <laughs> okay. Tuner call, short press, connect, disconnect, automatic tuner, long press, start, automatic tuner. That seems like it should be doing that, but now it works on the microphone. XFC is a short press for switch VFO AB, long press, copy the foreground VFO to the background. Nice. Uh, VM, short press, toggle VFO memo mode, long press equals nothing. Uh, MW short press, save VFO to current channel number, long press equals none, mode short press, uh, LSB 
digital, USB, digital, CW, reverse, AM, narrow FM. So it'll just cycle through all the modes like you'd expect. Long press does nothing. Filter, short press, filter one, filter two, filter three, cycle, long press equals no. Up frequency step in VFO, next channel, in channel mode. Down's the opposite, that makes sense. F1, F2, custom functions can be set in radio setting two. Excellent. Fix the problems that the standing wave meter jumps when there is no power and low power. I didn't notice that it jumped. Increase the maximum output power when externally powered. Increase it to what? That's kind of non-informational. It's supposed to be 10 watts when you're plugged into an external power supply. It was already 10 watts when you're plugged into an external power supply. So is it now more than 10 watts? More than its rated ability to radiate? Don't know. Optimize system startup sequence, good. They probably turned off a bunch of services that weren't needed like the web server. Uh, optimize the NR algorithm, we'll play with that a little bit. Optimize the system data structure, a change that we would never notice that they did, but okay. Optimize the display backlight adjustment level. So on battery it's five level, and then on power supply it's 10 level adjustment, okay. But uh, look for this update coming out to the US customers in English here any day now, and we will start putting out some videos on how um, each of these changes actually works or doesn't work. But uh, otherwise, there is a video right over here that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.